My name's Herman and I've been living and mining at Light News for 53 years. I introduced myself to a group of nice people the other day and I said, good morning, my name's Herman and I've been living up here and mining 53 years. The lady in the back of the group said to her neighbor, she says, oi, fancy anybody actually admitting being stuck in this dump for 53 years. It broke me little heart. I said, once you've been here a little while, you're likely to be here forever. And she says, and I know why too. That surprised me. I said, why do you think? You're all making so much bloody money. <laughs> I tried to explain it. It's the other way around. Once you've been here a little while, you're likely to be here forever. Because you're unfit for human consumption elsewhere. <laughs> That's why. And mostly you can't afford to leave. And the day or when the time when you can afford to leave, you got no place better to go. I've been here 53 years, small fish in a very small pond. But lightning roots been good to me. In my time up here, I've found a sport that was good to me. I tried golf, I tried tennis, couldn't handle any running and walking. I don't do that. I found a sport where you could stand still, slow down your heartbeat, and when you're ready, move a small portion of your body, a fraction of an inch not that portion of the body, finger, trigger finger. The Australian National Pistol Squad for the Commonwealth Games in Brisbane 1982, before most people were born. There I was a member, German the German, proudly a member of the Australian Target Pistol Shooting Club uh, Squad for the Commonwealth Games in Brisbane. But I was only number four in Australia, hit that big I couldn't fit in through the door until everybody explained to me, fourth place, Herman, shut up. But two years later, I always wanted to be at the Olympics in Los Angeles, at the Olympics, but two years later, I finished up at the Olympics, but Australia did not send a rapid fire shooter. None of our scores were big enough and good enough anyway. I was there working for the Americans, armory marshal at the shooting. My uniforms are hanging up on the wall there, proudly displayed. But I'm an official, I brought back a trophy. I'm an official, I brought back a trophy from the Olympics. Five foot ten, blonde, blue eyes. <laughs> I promised to take her someplace better. I lied. She's been out here 37 years now. I just made a breakfast in bed, so she's happy. But anyway, folks, living at Lightning Ridge, once you're used to it, you don't want to go any place else. I'm 83 years of age. I'm working seven days a week because I don't want to retire. I don't know what to do if I retire. People come in here, they say, oh, we retired years ago. We are busier now than we've ever been. Heck no. <laughs> I like being busy in here, getting to hold ladies' hands, trying a ring on without getting smacked. Anyway, so I like it. Anyway, folks, Come to Lightning Ridge, move here, stay here. We'll look after you. We'll get you set up. Herman, are you a poor immigrant made good? I'm still a poor immigrant. I spent 10 pounds coming out here. And I haven't got much further ahead anyway. So thank you for asking. But I've been in Australia 62 years. And I'm now desperately hanging on to my German accent. See, my German's different to the normal high German. My German's hillbilly German from the Black Forest, from the South. I tell you, we talk slow because we think slow and it suits me nicely. The short You got another question there written down? Ask me. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about your mining days. Okay, I spent nearly 30 years underground digging, but five years gouging, gouging for a living with a candle and a pick. That's the real mining. I was taught opal mining that way by an old Aboriginal gentleman, Mr. Jack Green. He took pity on Paul. I was traveling around Australia until I got stuck here. But he was mining about 40, 50 foot underground in an old rectangular shaft. Today's shafts are round, three foot diameter, one meter diameter, because they're sunk by a drilling rig. 
Mr. Green's shaft was sunk by hand, rectangular, just wide enough for his shoulders to fit in, while he's working with a crowbar and a pick and somebody up on top with a hand windlass. But he had no ladder, he had no rope to climb up and down with. He had cut tow holes in the side, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. And I gotta tell you, that was very, very difficult. And he said to me, Herman, don't take down, the way he put it, don't take down no water. But of course, <laughs> I knew better, like all good migrants. I took down the water bottle with me and I kept drinking it. And all of it, one day, I really, really, really had to go. So I'm climbing up the shaft, left foot, right foot. And just before I got to the top, my left toe was slipping. It had gotten all moist. I thought, oh, I never quite made it to the top. I shouldn't have had all that extra water. And then I realized I hadn't messed myself. It had started to sprinkle. But at that stage, my right toe had slipped all of a sudden. I'm hanging on by my elbows, my whole life flashing before my eyes. And I decided to look down. I wish I hadn't. If I looked down there, I saw just this once. I've forgotten to shift the short handle shovel in the middle of the shaft, looking up, waiting for me. And I've got the hard hat on my head. It's in the wrong place. Lady golfer said to me the other day, oh yeah, I know, we golfers call it the howling one. <laughs> Mining's interesting, thank you. What else? When did Sandy catch your eye? Oh, I should have mentioned, I should have mentioned that I've always wanted to be at the Commonwealth Games and at the Olympics. And at the Olympics, I did mention in 1984, Los Angeles, on the flight back, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. There she was, tall, blonde, blue-eyed. Well, <laughs> I talked her to death. <laughs> She's been out here ever since. 37 years later, she's still here. She claims she doesn't have blue eyes, but to me, she still does. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Remember the Australian squad for the Commonwealth Games '92? The um, apricot color uniforms, that's the Los Angeles Olympics. But, see, Lightning Ridge has been so good to me uh, because you can please yourself. You've got freedom. My poor ex wife had to travel from here to Walga to teach on a non air conditioned school bus. We had two school buses running into Walga every day, well, five days a week, because we did not have the big school here as we do now. She lasted seven years, the poor lady. Anyway, but I brought Sandy back from the Olympics, but as I said, it gave me the opportunity here, living at Lightning Ridge, I became state team manager for New South Wales State Amateur Pistol Association. I was senior vice president of the state association. I practiced 40 hours a week at one time at the range and at home drive firing uh, to make the Australian squad, which I did. So, the good looking fellow with the Muslim beard, that was me when I was mining, 30 years underground. And that gorgeous lady next to me, to me next to the fan, that's the child bride. I brought her back from the Olympics. That big opal pendant she's wearing, we had offered that to Christina Keneally when she was Premier of New South Wales to give to Oprah Winfrey on the visit on Oprah's visit to Australia. State government wrote back and said, "Thank you very much. That's very kind of you, but Oprah's visits arranged by federal government. We should make the same offer to Miss Gillard." I kind of couldn't see myself doing that. <laughs> I declined. But the child bride's been out here. 37 years now and she kind of loves me enough to stay here. Thank you. <laughs>